Hey, what's up you guys? It's Bloody Jacob here to bring you another review. This time I'm going to be reviewing the first episode of Sci-Fi's new zombie TV series, Z Nation. And this episode was entitled Puppies and Kittens. Alright, so I wasn't really going into this series or episode expecting much at all. Let's just get that uh, cleared out right off of that. Um, I really just watched it expecting like a B-movie zombie TV series, basically. And that's exactly what I got, pretty much for the most part. Um, you know, of course, people are going to be comparing Z Nation and The Walking Dead to each other left and right. And I've already been seeing that being done quite a lot. <laughs> And as far as that goes, um, Z Nation is basically what you'd expect The Walking Dead to be before you see how good The Walking Dead actually is. <laughs> um, sort of reminds me of before I got my brother and my dad hooked on The Walking Dead. They didn't really uh, think it would be anything great. They just thought it'd be like the your basic gore fest action, not much character substance really. You know, they just expect it to be all violence. Uh, zombie action driven and not much you know depth to it but of course once I showed them the first episode they were both automatically hooked on The Walking Dead you know because of the characters and the great acting and the you know it's just, it's just a really character driven story you know with zombies in it it's about the characters not the zombies with Z Nation it's what they thought The Walking Dead was going to be which is basically a zombie movie turned into a TV series um, we get the zombie action, we get the gore, we get like the over-the-top um, situations and stuff like that. But no, Z Nation doesn't compare to The Walking Dead in my personal opinion. But of course I understand that it's also not taking itself nearly as seriously as The Walking Dead does. Um, like uh, Trev's Chen 2, you know, kind of compared it to Zombieland, you know, because it's a little bit... Uh, comedic but also with, you know with a little bit of seriousness in it but as far as that comparison goes it's not it's not quite as comedic as Zombieland either um, it's not nearly as funny either uh, so it's just really I don't know just basically like your run of the mill zombie movie turned into a TV series in my opinion um, but as far as the action goes yes the action is exciting it's well I don't know if I'd say exciting, but the action is, you know, fun to watch, you know, for a bit. But I tried to watch it last night, and I couldn't really pay attention for too long because I was falling asleep. But that's probably my fault since I've been getting up at 5.30 in the morning for school for the past couple weeks. So, yeah, so the action, you know, it, it can be fun. And, you know, the gore is your basic sci-fi gore. I mean, you see the when the zombies get shot, you know, you can tell it's, like, CGI blood and stuff like that. And the makeup effects, um, there's not nearly as much effort put into this as on The Walking Dead either. Um, you know, it's basically a downgrade as far as that goes, too. You know, there's no Greg Nicotero behind Z Nation or anything like that, that's for sure. So, yeah, I'm not gonna try to talk about the show for too long, but I do want to go, go through parts of the story, so if you haven't seen the episode of Z Nation yet, Puppies and Kittens, uh, you may not want to watch this next part. I will be spoiling it. Um, so basically we start off with this guy named uh, Hammond, or I might be mispronouncing his name, I might be saying his name wrong, but, you know, he's the black guy you see in the previews for the show. You know, he and his squad are basically, you know, uh, seeing all these people get vaccinated, they're testing all these different uh, chemical, or like, uh, combinations they've been working on to see if it cures or any of them if they finally f came up with a vaccine or something like that and uh yeah we, then we see one guy on one of the tables you know he gets swarmed by a bunch of zombies and looks like he's getting torn up but you know we see we eventually see him and Hammond his name's actually Murphy by the way so he goes with Hammond and they travel together and they eventually run into another group you know who's just you know has like a camp on the outside I mean, like, outside somewhere in the woods and stuff like that. And there's even a little reference to The Walking Dead in this, actually. Uh, coincidentally enough. Um, 
Hammond mentions that uh, ex cop at a with a few others out of prison told us to, you know, head up here to talk to you guys. So yeah, that's obviously could be referring to Rick and the rest of the group while they're still at the prison. But of course, I want to take that with you know too much seriousness. Of course, it's not in the same world as The Walking Dead. That's not true at all. <laughs> but uh, a nice little nod to The Walking Dead, at least. You know, it's kind of cool. And so they basically that they join up with that group, and eventually Hammond shows that that group, you know, all Murphy's bites and stuff, they somehow managed to survive because at the beginning it looked like Murphy's just getting gonna was just getting torn apart. So I don't know how he really survived that at all. But, you know, the fact is I got bitten a few times and, you know, he hasn't turned yet. And so he tells him, he tells the group that he has to get uh, this man to California, you know, because he has, like, a vaccine or, like, the last thing they put into him in his blood so they can use him to have a chance at possibly being able to save humanity. So, you know, it's going down a different route with the storyline than The Walking Dead is. In The Walking Dead, they're just trying to survive the world. They're not, like, trying to save it unless they are actually trying to save it for the most part but I imagine they're not gonna it's not gonna really work out too well <laughs> so yeah it's a different approach as far as the story goes um, and eventually you know they get to a town and you know Hammond finds that the rest of the squad was killed and the zombies got into that area and stuff like that and you know, they find a baby in a car, and so they start taking care of the baby, but, of course, Murphy, you know, he's, like, the realist of the group. You know, he's, like, he's a dick, <laughs> but uh, they need, they can't, like, hurt him or anything because they, you know, need to get him to California or wherever they need to go for that possible vaccine that's in his blood. So, he's kind of funny, though. He's, like, the one character who's a little bit entertaining in the, sh in the series. Um, I'll get to that more in a few minutes, though. And so... That baby, though, as you know in the previews, we get we got to see a zombie baby, and apparently when a baby turns in the show, they get like a supernatural and superhuman ability. Not supernatural, but like they get like superhuman abilities, somehow I guess, because <laughs> they get like increased athleticism and they get some strength in them and stuff like that, and they sneak around and try to hide and jump out at you. So it's yeah, really kind of weird. So that kind of tells you the tone of the show right there um so there's that and you know, eventually Hammond goes into the building he's supposed to kill the baby but a female zombie attacks him and the baby jumps on, on him at the same time and they both basically bite into Hammond quite a few times and they tear him up really so yeah the main character that was uh, shown in the previews or at least the guy in the previews who we th would think would be the main character for the series got killed in the first episode so yeah, there's that, um, and you know, and the rest of the group comes in after they hear him screaming, and they see him like he, like his guts are torn out and stuff like that, and they're just, you know, feeding on him basically, and so you know, they just do a whole firing squad thing and put him and the baby and the, you know, the other zombie down. So yeah, you know, you didn't really expect that. So basically, the guy, the main guy from the group who they encountered, is basically going to be our lead along with Murphy. You know, the guy who got bitten so many times but didn't turn. So, yeah, I didn't really expect Hammond to die. I mean, because he was kind of promoted as the main character, but hey, so whatever. I didn't really care about him too much anyway, but still a little surprising. Um. Yeah, and it basically just ends with the. Uh, Oh yeah, a guy from Breaking Bad made an appearance in this show. Uh, I don't remember his name, but he was in Antarctica, I believe. And, you know, he was left there by the rest of his group. And, you know, then he's see, see he seen the plane crash that they were flying in. So he basically stayed there and is holding down the fort, basically, and talking to him on the radio and things like that. And, yeah, he was on Breaking Bad because you remember, I forget what season it was, but he's the undercover cop who uh got uh not Baxter um oh wow why well, can't I remember his name right now Badger yeah he's the guy who got Badger arrested in Breaking Bad who set him up in that park on the bench so yeah and he's basically talking to our survivors on the radio and uh 
so the episode really ends with uh, Murphy going off with the group, and they're going to try to still make it to California because, you know, they, they're basically putting their faith in that the there actually is a chance for a vaccine in Murphy's blood. So that's where the episode really ends. And I go over every detail, but I don't think I really needed to. I mean, there's not, like, that many crucial parts to the story in this episode. Um, and as far as my overall thoughts on the show... It's definitely, definitely, definitely not nearly as good as The Walking Dead whatsoever. But again, I don't think it's trying to be The Walking Dead completely either because it has a totally different tone. It's more about the over-the-top action and just purely the gore and the zombie violence, really. So it's not it's not really trying to be The Walking Dead, Dead but of course people are going to be comparing it left and right like they already have. So that's why I'm, you know, comparing them. And, uh, but as far as the rest of the show goes, I mean, the acting is okay. It's basically your average type of thing. You know, it's really like a Sharknado of the zombie world. Not nearly as, not quite as ridiculous as Sharknado, maybe, but still. Um, I don't really care about any of the characters yet. Uh, minus Murphy, I mean, I think he's a little bit entertaining. But other than that, I don't really care about anyone too much. Or him, really, for that matter, a whole lot yet. But yeah, so the yeah, but the zombie violence was okay. You know, it was fun to watch, and I don't think I'm gonna be watching it every night it airs. But say I'm I am on a weekend like I was today, and you know, I don't really have anything else to watch. I'll probably check out the next episode on demand. And uh, you know, if I just get bored, I just want to shut my mind off and watch some zombie action. I might just turn the show on, and I recommend you do the same if you just feel like, you know, some mindless zombie action. It can be fun for a little while. So yeah, it's definitely not a show you're going to be too crazy over, I don't think, but it kind of serve its, serves its purpose of being a your basic run-the-mill zombie movie turned into a TV show. It's basically how they can sum it up. And if you guys want to check it out, of course, you can form your own opinion, and... Yeah, I might check, like I said, I might check this one out again if I just feel like watching, you know, zombies killing people or people killing zombies. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time, hopefully for my strain review tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, peace.